at 17 you meet him and you like him because um you know when you are in that environment of being abused and feeling like yo i am not going to be what i want to be mm. maybe this is this i should this is a good way out a good way out yeah you know yeah and he was a very nice guy he yeah. was a very loving guy and it was something that i actually wanted yeah. for myself yeah. i felt maybe this is th this is the way yeah and we didn't date for a long time yeah and we got married yeah because when i was now in matric i was married yeah pregnant ready to wow. be to be everything that yeah. i wanted to be and the first few years of the marriage the first few years started changing because yeah. that's when he started being an actor and, yeah you know and becoming famous. Oh, so when you met him he wasn't patrick shy he wasn't patrick shy the actor he yes was patrick shy my husband yes the loving guy yeah yeah and i wouldn't want to say fame changed him yeah because i think we saw abuse as well yeah and in a way we we learn from our parents yes indirectly. we, we learn in what they do in many ways we mirror them yeah yeah and and also because he also saw his uncle he i think he never saw a man treating a woman with a woman with respect and love and all that yes so he thought when you marry someone he is she, this person is your object you own this, them you own them yeah so and and that's what he learned yeah yeah so and and then you know and then you know he beats you yeah the first time he beat you did you think ah uh, he'll come around yeah. everything will be normal yes yeah. you know there is so many excuses and thinking ah, it won't happen again but the shock went on for a long time mm -hmm. just the first slap took me almost a year i couldn't believe that is this the man that i love this man that loved me only so just much. from the slap just from the slap yeah and when it started happening yeah i felt oh no it means this is who he is when this is your new me. normal yeah now i've got to now play safe yeah and be sorry yeah even when i didn't do anything wrong so i started playing those games when he comes late and when he didn't sleep over probably i would just apologize you know when, so when you he, you in a way you became an enabler yes you I became you, one. you you started uh, uh, as, as a as a mode of protecting yourself yes you you started uh, uh, to be apologetic for even existing yes. for the for, for apologizing for things you didn't even do wrong yes just to play safe yeah. because safety was the first thing now in my mind how do i play safe in this situation how do i make sure that he doesn't get angry yeah. how do i make sure that you know he doesn't think that i'm on to him or what's the worst beating he ever gave you was it a be was it the worst cuz the kids saw Yes. Was it the worst because he had to go to a hospital or was it the worst because family members got to know the one that you deemed the worst? Which one was the worst? Sure. The worst was when he beat me up one night and he said, let's get into the car. We need to go and talk because he had realized that the kids are now scared of him when they're starting comes, to notice they started to notice yeah and every time they would hear or also i would hear his car coming over mm. I would start your eyes are watering and i'm scared <laughs> when now yeah no, no, no they're no. not okay no okay i'm, I'm okay okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's this heat yeah Don't okay worry. okay um and then he said no let's go let's drive let's drive were you and were getting you scared to get in the car with him i was scared yeah because i knew what he was capable of mm. and then we got into the car and then he locked the car you know those cars where um, you press something you and press everything something. locks yeah yes and then we drove out together because at that time now he's trying to save his kids from seeing this but they've already seen it how many kids three kids three kids okay but our eldest son is the one who's seen almost all yeah you know yeah and then we drove out we drove 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 up to a, 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 an open field yeah where he really beat me up yeah you know he still beat you some more yeah yeah and for some reason there came a car and this car was the police yeah and i was too i was scared to even say guys i'm in trouble too, help so. me yeah i was scared because i knew what would happen gonna, later what will happen later yeah and um then they stopped and he said no 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 we're trying to fix the car we called our friend something is wrong with our car and then they said okay and then they left mm. and then when they left it was like did you want to say something to them i said no 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 i didn't want to say anything to them and then then we came back home in mm. the morning um i had to just rush out mm. i had to just rush out take my plastics 
as if I'm going to work and I went home. And when I got home, my You father, left your kids. I left my kids. Yeah. When I got home, my father could not recognize me except hearing my voice. Okay. And then because of the, the level of the PT the level on of your the face. PT because yeah. one of my bones on my face was, was broken. Yeah. And I didn't understand how come because I've come to learn to wear the mask. I've yeah. come to learn to just hide and put makeup and go to work with those blue eyes and nobody would see. Yeah. If they see, they would just... As you said, you were an enabler. Yes. Yes. Then my father said, okay, let's go to the police station. And I was so scared as well to go to the police station. I thought, sure, it would mean I'm divorcing him and that's not what I've signed up for. So it was never an option. It was never an option. To leave him. To leave. Okay, okay. But I, I'll tell you, I packed, I don't know how many times in my lifetime. Yeah. I packed and left and he would go around and look for me. Yeah. Then we went to the police station and then we meet this policeman who is much older and I was like, ish, at least he's older, he will understand. Yeah. And the first thing that he said to me, um, why are you opening a case against your husband? I said, because a that's policeman a said policeman. That to you. Yeah. And I said, because of what I'm looking like, yeah. you know, and he said, I'm sure you have a boyfriend because a domestic violence is a private matter. A domestic wow. violence is not something that you can open a case against your husband. And I'm, um, you know what, even if you can go now on Saturday evening in the police and sit there and see how they address these issues, there is no privacy. There is no way that anyone who is, who is, um, who abused. is abused can just go there and feel like... It's, not a, it's, not, a, it's, a, it's not a safe or it's comforting, not a safe environment, environment for the, for the environment victim. For the victim, no. Okay. And then when we get home, mm. it's a different case. They get home, they find this person that they love they see on tv he's a hero time, he's a hero he's a and hero they start talking to him and they become marriage counselors and while i'm <laughs> sitting there I'm, I'm i've got i've got blood on my face until it dries because okay. now they're trying to make sense to him no this is wrong this is wrong yeah so then let, 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 let's how many years did the abuse go on for i would say 15 years because when he came here yeah um one of the things that he said, he's, he spoke to us about doing Soul City. Yes. And the character that he was playing was yeah. an abuser. Yeah. And he said he had a moment, almost an epiphany on set, yes. where it hit him like a ton of bricks that yeah. in his real life, mm. he is the person who is the character that he is playing. Yes. And he cannot stand himself. Yes. And he said he took a time out on set. Yeah. He was so overwhelmed because yeah. something just hit me that I am this person mm. and this person is me. Yeah. Did he come home? What happened that day? He came home with the Soul City crew because Soul he City came with the crew. He came, he came with those guys. Yeah. And they actually wanted to kill me. Yeah. You know, and I think in their mind they thought I I was sitting there being beaten and doing nothing about it. But mm. I said I opened cases I don't know how many times in my life until I stopped mm. because you get there you are a regular now they you come in they say Hi, happen. what's Chaba? Yeah. what happened now when and happen. that made me feel like no I'm losing myself here yeah I'm not getting help and I expect help yeah Um. when they came then they started asking did you get any help did you and at the time I was not even aware you were like what's I going on that angry and I've lost myself yeah I've lost that person that wanted to be a better person yeah that wanted to build herself that wanted to have a good life and, yeah. and go to school and study and do that even yeah. though I studied while I was in that situation yeah. I forced it women are strong yes yes I forced it and I did my degree and I did my diploma in labor law in that situation he would come and fight and say you're studying your kids are sleeping and then I would just pack my books and go and, and sleep just so he doesn't fight. Yeah. But I would find those moments to study and make sure that even if I leave him, at least I have something in my hand. At least I'm not, I'm were not the, empty. In the years of the beatings, yes. were the moments where you told each other, I love you, I love you? Yeah. He would tell me he loved me maybe a day after he beat me up. Yeah. And I would be livid. Yeah. And I, I promise you, he is a loving father. Yeah. He takes care of the family. Yeah. I don't he's a know. good provider. He's a good provider. Yeah. And I think he explained it um, when we were speaking in ESCOM last year. Yeah. That abusers are providers. Abusers because are. Because they have to make They up. have to make sure. Yes. No, besides, besides that, they have to make sure they say to you, you cannot get this anywhere else. If it's not me, if it's not it me, to you? No one will give you this. Okay. So he explained that it's one way of 
of keeping you and making sure that you don't leave, you know? You say you forgave him. Yes. In fact, he's written a, uh, a, a, I think, one of the forewords. A preamble. In a preamble yes. in your book. Yeah. How did the forgiveness come about? The, for the forgiveness was the most tough one. Yeah. Remember, you're looking at this person every day of your life. Yeah. You get angry. Th there are always triggers. Even if nothing is happening. Yeah. I mean, he had stopped beating me up. Uh, many years ago, I yeah. mean, he had stopped, but I would be looking at something on TV, I would be thinking of something or reading something, and the memory would just play play itself, yeah. and I would get angry. Yeah. And then I started, you know, because I'm a Christian, yeah. I then asked the ladies to help me to pray, because if I don't forgive this man, I'm just going to pack and go. Yes. Or I'll end up killing him, Yeah. you know, yeah. and he's not doing anything. Honestly, he's not doing anything. Yeah. He's tried. Yeah. And I don't want him to I don't I didn't want to see him smile. Yeah. Because I wanted him to to, to, to be feel, like a prisoner. To, to feel, feel what, what he you done, felt. You know? Yes. But at the end of the day it was my choice to actually say, Okay, let's try also let's try together and see if things will be better. Yeah. And he was really doing his best. Yeah. And yo, know, it took many, many years. Yeah. But by the time I understood what forgiveness is all about, I made that choice because I realized I'm in prison myself. Yes. I, I'm looking at him. I'm not expecting him to give it's, that big smile. It's the Mandela story. Yeah. You said, if I don't forgive uh, 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 the people that jailed me, yeah. uh, I remain in there even though yes. physically I'm yeah. out. They yeah. still have my power. They still have my and power. And when I made the choice, the freedom that I felt, the, 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 the emptiness that I felt in my spirit was you felt lighter. I felt very light. Yeah. I and the, and then did you find your relationship with Patrick again, the a normal relationship where you're yes. just a man and his wife, and you laugh at jokes and you do the things that people that are married do. I, I will tell you something. We we found each other, but change in itself is also a struggle. Yeah. Remember now, I've taken back my power. Yeah. I can speak now. Yes. I never used to speak like this. I can speak, I can talk to people, I can stand on, on, on stage and talk about what he has Your done. Your experiences. I, my experiences. I am not afraid of anything You're now. not a victim. I'm not a victim anymore. Yes. So sometimes when he listens to me, he feels like I'm probably attacking him some way or um, he doesn't have that power as a man. And mm. I said, there shouldn't be power between the two of us. We should just be Equals. husband and wife and yes. be equal. Yes, there's because no power struggle. There's no power struggle. Yeah. But with a man who has grown up being told that he's got to be It's a learning power, experience. It's a learning experience for him. We go through the same challenges as everybody else. It's not like it's that perfect. Yeah. You know, there is no perfect there is relationship. No perfection. Yeah. Yeah. But we when we are invited in, in places to speak. Yeah. We speak honestly, with, honestly, with yeah. openness. Who should read your book, Mas Chaba, removing the mask when living a lie is no longer an option? I love at the back you say love can sometimes be a choice between life yeah. or death, yeah. but it does not have, have to, to be. be. I want young girls to read this book. Mm. I want women to read this book. Mm. I also want men to read this book because I can tell you that it's not only me who went through that abuse. I know there's someone in our family who was a man who was abused mm. by the wife. Mm -hmm. And this was some kind of a joke, you know? It was a joke because he could not open a case. He was helpless. He's a man on top of that. Mm -hmm. He could not, I've never seen him going to the police station. And there was never an advice for him to do something about it, mm. you know? And when it happened to me, the same thing happened. People mm. were laughing. People were like, Mm, you know, there yeah. was no advice. There was no rescue. Yeah. Somebody who can rescue you. Does it ever worry both you and Patrick yeah. that the oldest one of your three, the one who started to figure out what was going on yeah. the day he drove you out, might end up, you know, wanting to explore that way of living? Is there any sort of counseling that you gave the oldest one for, for is, I don't know whether it's a him or a her. It's a him. It, it's a him. That it's not okay for a boy child or a man to treat a woman that way. Unfortunately with him, he he took a different route. Mm. He made a choice. He made a choice yeah. to use drugs. Yeah. To numb the pain. Yeah. And we live with him sometimes. Sometimes yeah. he's not with us. Yeah. At the moment he's not with us. Yeah. He lives in the streets. Yeah. Because he felt like 
I would rather have nothing than to live in that beautiful house where there is no love and peace wow. and, and there's all those And those that fights. must hurt a lot. It is hurting. Yeah. He's still in the streets right now. And yeah. when I drive and I see him, I, I can sleep peacefully. Yeah. But when I drive and I don't see him, you worry, you're a I mom. worry. Yeah. You know? But it has come to a point where I mean we took him to so many rehabs. Mm. We paid so much money. And he he's not there yet. You can't rehabilitate a we person can't. who doesn't want to be yes. rehabilitated. Yes. So we felt he has to want to change. Yeah. Otherwise, we can't do anything. For Power him. to you for writing this thank book. Thank you. I'm going to read it. Yes. And thank you for bringing it to me. Well, if people want to get in touch with you to get the book, uh, they can contact me on my number. Yeah. 060 060 424 424 8724 8724. Oh, they can get it online, but it's easier when they contact me directly than okay. I courier the books to them. Okay, 060-424-8724. Yes. I think power to you and, you and and power uh, to being the voice of the voiceless yes. and uh, keep on teaching because uh, you've learned a profound lesson in your life yeah. and your responsibility now is to teach is others. To teach, yes. Keep on teaching and send our love to Patrick. You are one of the success stories and yes. those are very rare. Yeah. And, and thank you for your courage to come and sit and tell your and truth thank to you. us. And he's the one who arranged this. He called me and said, there are people who will call you. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then they called me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you to him. Thank you to you. Yes. Uh, but thank you for using your family as a teaching tool yes. to a very wounded nation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Masa Chaba Shai. The book is called Removing the Mask. You can get her on 60 